Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Wingspan, the Oceania expansion and the Automa solo variant. All in one big go. I did a video back when Wingspan first came out, that January 2019. One of my favourite games of 2019, still a favourite around here, love it. And it's just got a new expansion which adds 95 new bird cards, some yellow eggs and things, just more stuff. If you liked Wingspan, here's more of it. I did a two-player playthrough originally, which I'll link in the description if you haven't seen it and you really want to see how the multiplayer works, but I never did a video for the solo version and Stone My Games always do fantastic variants. Well, Automa Factory does the solo variants for Stone My Games and they always do fantastic work, so I'm going to be showing you one that I really love from them as well. So what do I need to say before we can get started? There is a handheld and a static camera. You can switch between them in the description based on what you prefer. There is a Klingon subtitle channel. If you flick that on, then you can get notified of any mistakes I might have made. And there is a Patreon if you'd like to help me keep making these playthroughs. It's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips. Thank you very much to everyone that supports me on there because... Hey, you made this possible, and uh, every little helps. And all of the things I'm supposed to say were not quite in that order. Let's get going then. Here's Marty to help out. Never wants to be left out of a playthrough. Just like going in the window and interrupting the videos these days. Anyway, on with the actual game. So we need to finish off a little bit of setup here. We get given two goal cards at the start of the game, and we need to pick one of those to go in with. And we get given five bird cards, one of each type of food, and we also get a nectar, one of the new, well, the new type of food in the Oceania expansion. This is kind of a wild card. It can count as any of these things for a lot of purposes, other than when powers specifically want a food type, you can't substitute it for nectar then. But for a lot of other things, like paying the costs of birds, some want nectar specifically, but say this one wants a worm or a wheat, I could use a nectar instead. And there's a majority thing involved with spending nectar that we'll see. Anyway, so I have five cards and five food. I can keep as many of these cards as I want, but for every one I want to keep, I need to give up one of these food. It can be anything, nothing to do with what food they want to be put out with. It's just that's the cost of keeping these cards at the start of the game. So we can kind of look at how these mesh with each other. We have the forest data analyst, consecutive birds in the forest with ascending or descending wingspans. So the more consecutive birds I can get with ascending or descending wingspans, I'll get more points from uh, three for three birds up to eight for five consecutive birds. Site selection expert, columns with a matching pair or trio of nests. So two of the same nest in a column is one point. Three of the same nest in a column is three points. So it would be tricky to pull off, I think. But, you know, five columns, get loads of birds out, match all of the nests. That is 15 points right there. Uh, I think I'm going to go for site selection expert. I'm going to go for matching nests. So we look, we do have, say, the forest. We just have a couple here. We could do 30, then 73. Out up here, we've got 29, so we could do 29, then 30, then 45, then 73. It's just, that's something we're going to have to look out for over the course of the game. I feel, I've just got an inkling that matching nests is going to be easier. I'm going to go for the site selection expert. So the birds that I have out here, we have the Australian magpie. Quite expensive to get out, but at the end of the game, discard a bird from every bird in this row and column that has an egg on it, excluding this bird, and for each discarded egg, cash two wheat from the supply on this bird. So basically, eggs on birds at the end of the game are all worth a point each. Food is worth a point each as well. So this is basically gaining you a food on every bird in this row and column, the same as the Australian magpie. Earn an extra point on all of those birds, essentially what's that saying, as long as they've got an egg on them. Superb liar bird. Uh, when activated, copy a brown power on a bird in the forest of the player to your right. Not great in a solo game. Now, uh, you can, there is a little exclusion. You, I think when you're copying from the Automa, you can copy one from the tray instead. So, you know, it would be kind of a shifting ability. Uh, Horsefield's Bushlock. When activated, discard a wheat, and if you do, put up to two eggs on this bird. Now, it can only have two eggs on it, so that's not necessarily going to be something that can keep happening. Although you could spend them from there. That could be a nice early way of getting eggs there. I'm going to put that forward as a maybe. New Holland Honey Eater. Cheap to get out. It doesn't need nectar, so although it's only one resource, it is a nice wild resource. 
When activated, gain a nectar from the bird feeder if there is one. The bird feeder is over here. Look at the marvelous bird feeder. Sorry, static cameras, you don't get the full effect seeing it from above, but it's a lovely 3D cardboard bird feeder. I quite like that as well. The Eastern Whip Bird, a bit more expensive, five points though. Uh, choose one other player, you both gain a wheat from the supply. So that basically in a solo game just means I gain a wheat from the supply. I quite like them. Now, these do have the same costs. I would want to get that out first. I would want to keep these resources spare. Maybe we'd spend these three resources to keep these three cards. I like the feel of them. And matching columns for nests, that would work out quite well, I think. Well, that would get me the wheat, and then I could use this to spend the wheat to get eggs on this bird and then start using the eggs for stuff. Ooh, I don't know yet. So these two just get discarded. They are out of the game. Now we can move on to my actual turn. So we've got the gold that I'm looking for. We've got the birds in my hand. One thing to keep in mind are the goals for the game. Uh, there are four new gold tiles in the Oceania expansion, which means eight different goals. They're all double-sided. And so for round one, we want the most cubes on player bird. You get a cube on it every time you do it. So I want to play as many birds as possible. And the Autumn is going to compete for all of these goals. First place gets you four points, the second place just gets you one point. So, and in the future we want birds with the beak pointing right and birds that uh, have worms, fish and mice in their food costs, their future rounds uh, considerations, but it all builds up to, I've, I've taken no birds with their beaks point right. I think to get started, have we got a worm out here? Yes. I am going to play a bird as my first action. We have these eight action cubes here. To perform an action, you pop a cube on the action. Now you can, when you're playing a bird, you can use any two resources as another resource, so you're not entirely restricted by what you have. Now by playing birds here, we make actions more powerful. So they go in a particular row, some have multiple rows on them, so you can choose where they go in. But in the forest here, that relates to the action gain food from the bird feeder. If I was to just do that action right now, I would get one food from the bird feeder, pick one of the dice and get that food token. I could discard a card to get an extra food, but now I've played a bird in here, I will get two just as default, and I can choose to pay a food to reset the bird feeder, put all the dice back in and re-roll them all. As well as that, you perform the main action, so gain food, then you activate any brown powers in this row. So every time I gain food from the bird feeder, I'll also gain a wheat, no matter what dice I took. And that's the same for all of these other things. I like that. Okay, so... What do I want to do now? Oh, I want to have the Automa have a turn, don't I? So for the Automa, it has 10 standard cards. There is one uh, expert level card that I've not included in here. Uh, and there is a new card that's shuffled in for the Oceania expansion. As well as that, this expansion includes a way of playing with the Automa in a multiplayer game, in a two to four player game, and a horde mode for the Automa where it's a lot more competitive uh, with the, the brown abilities, you know, the, the when activated abilities. Uh, but I'm just playing the standard mode over here. Now, it does get a gold card at the beginning. I've, I've been a bit uh, kind of uh, lenient with the setup rules. It does normally say, you know, shuffle together the Oceania expansion with the base game cards. I'm just using the new birds just so I can show off as many as possible in this. Usually you would use some of the things from the base game as well. And you can mix it all together if you'd like to. If you have the European expansion too, shuffle it all together if you like. It's all, uh, it's all balanced. So the rulebook says, and hey... We trust the rulebook. So I, I did have to take this from the base game, though, because the Automa really wants gold cards that have a percentage of cards on the bottom of them, so it can fulfill them. Uh, so we just draw a random Automa card, we pop it on this round tracker, and it's going to point... Oh, this is the new card that gets included with this expansion. It points to the current round and what it's going to do this round. So Automa is going to play a bird card. For the Automa, what this means is... It takes all the bird cards from the tray that match its bonus card. It keeps the highest point value card face up and discards any others. And then if none of them match, it just gets a face down card. At normal difficulty, which is what I'm playing, all of its face down cards at the end of the game are worth four points. So for its goal, fishery manager, it's going to look for birds that eat fish. So the black swan here could eat anything, could eat fish. So it will take that, it's the only one, the others don't have that in their requirements. So it takes this face up and has scored six points. And we replace, oh actually, it discards everything else from the display, so they're out of the game. And we can see some brand new cards here, I don't think we even looked at those ones. 
have uh, brown falcon, which can hunt some things. We have the tawny frogmouth, which uh, can get some extra food from the bird feeder, but the food goes on the card, and so is worth extra points at the end of the game. And the emu, expensive to get out, could go anywhere. So can the brown falcon, actually. Uh, when activated, gain all the wheat in the bird feeder, keep half rounded up, and then choose how to distribute the remainder among other players. For goals like that in solo, you just don't do the other player thing. You just discard what you would normally give to other players. Oh, I didn't spend my resources to put that uh, bird out, did I? So I'll spend those, because otherwise getting more resources doesn't make sense. So if I want to put more birds out, by the way, into this row, you can see at the top of the column we have an egg cost as well as the printed food cost on the bird card. So there's some restrictions to just being able to put more and more birds out. But I'd kind of like the bush lark to go out first, so ideally I would like a worm and two wheat. You know, one to pay for this cost and one wheat to discard to do its ability. Can I do that with this action? I can't get that many uh, food in one go, can I? So maybe we'd have to put the honey eater out later. So what I'm going to do is gain food from the bird feeder. So I can pick two dice. I can pay a food to reset the dice. I don't want to do that. What I actually want to do is nectar is wild for a lot of these things. So I could just take the nectar instead of the worm and the wheat. I'm going to take one wheat because you actually do need wheat for its power. And then I'm going to take a nectar for the other one because there is an advantage to spending nectar, which we'll see next turn. Then also, oh, actually, I get the wheat for free, don't I? So I won't take the wheat die. I'll just take two nectar dice because now choose one other player. You both gain a wheat from the supply. Solo game, you don't choose any other player. I just get a wheat. No dice involved in that. Just get a wheat from the supply. So that's my turn. Automa is going to... Oh, it didn't do this, did it? It wasn't going to do anything. There are co there are cubes on here, which are either add cubes or remove cubes from the goals for the round. And so it would remove a cube from a goal, but it hasn't placed one there, so it won't do anything just yet. It's a way of it competing for these goals. It has a base value, so round one, this is the specific reference card for the Oceania expansion. Uh, cubes on player bird, there is one at the moment. It will end up with more than that, because at the moment we're tying. I've played a bird, he's played a bird. And he really has as well. But it doesn't matter how many birds he actually played, it matters how many cubes he's got in there. He is getting food. So he will, this is his priority for the dice. A couple have changed. The wheat on its own is now wheat and nectar, and the cherry on its own is cherry and nectar now. That's because the dice themselves have changed. They're new in the expansion, as well as all this extra stuff. There are yellow eggs in there now, all sorts of stuff. So it's going to take that as a priority. It doesn't actually get the food, doesn't need any of that, just gets cards and stuff. Just taking a dice away from me. And then activate all pink powers. This is a way of triggering your pink powers, which concern other players doing things, which the automat often won't do. So it gives you an extra opportunity to activate those powers. I don't have any, so we can just ignore that for now. I am ready to activate Horsefield's Bushlock. So that's going to cost me a worm and a wheat. I'm going to pay nectar and nectar because it's wild for the cost of uh, the bird's food. My spent nectar goes on this space in the row that I'm spending it for. So I'm spending it over here. The person with the majority nectar for each of the terrain types at the end of the game gets five points. Second place just gets two points. The Automa starts the game with four in each box in a normal difficulty game. Three on easy, five on hard. And at the end of each round, that's going to fluctuate. So at the moment, I've just got two out there. And then later when I activate it, I can get a load of extra eggs on it. Okay, I'm happy with that. Nectar, by the way, as great as it is for being a wild resource, does not last between rounds. So spend it, use it or lose it. Uh, Autumn's turn is going to play a bird card again. So it's looking for birds that eat fish. There are none, so it's going to draw a face down card. So that's just four points it's earned there. No cubes or anything to worry about, so we can go back to my turn. Now I'm going to need an egg if I want another bird in this row. So I think I would like to lay eggs on birds, and we can see that action. So how many eggs do I get? Just two. It would have been one, and then I could pay a card or a resource to get an extra one. But I get two straight eggs here. Now all the different colors of eggs, just cosmetic. Take whichever eggs that you feel most comfortable with, and you can put them on any birds. Uh, any birds that have got space for them. It says on their card how many eggs they're allowed. Now, I want to put them over here on the Eastern Whip bird. Eggs at the end of the game are a point each because the bushlock here can only have two eggs on it and its ability, which is going to trigger now, activate any brown powers in this row, discard a wheat, which I can, and then, if you do, lay up to two eggs on this bird. 
So I get an extra couple there. That's good for points, but I want to spend eggs from here to get more birds out because I can easily replenish them just for the cost of a wheat. That's my turn, and Automa goes again. It's going to draw cards. What this means is it's going to discard all three cards from the tray, and then it draws a card face down. So not getting any of these lovely predators, unfortunately. And Automa gets another four points. We replenish the display and see some beautiful bird cards. Illustration is just amazing in this game, always. And also we need to get a cube on this round's goal card. So effectively, it's got two cubes on player bird and I, oh, I haven't placed a cube on there. I've got two as well, but I'm gonna be doing another one. Now I think, yeah, why not? Or do I want to draw bird cards because I could use the nectar to draw two bird cards instead of just one? What have we got out here? We've got the musk duck, draw a face-up card from the tray with a particular type of nest. You may reset or refill the tray before doing so. So I could draw some cards as long as they've got particular nests. I'm not thinking about matching nests as I'm playing these cards, am I? Oh, so maybe I should have put the honey eater out. This was probably better long run for getting eggs and stuff, and I could still get the right nest down here. Yeah, the musk duck would match up with the much with the bush lock and it would be one point for the column. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna draw bird cards as my action. Boom. I'm going to definitely take the musk duck, and then I think I'll spend a nectar to boost the action. That nectar does go down here, so I've spent a nectar there for the majority. And so I could take the black shouldered kite, it's a predator. When activated, reset the bird feeder and gain a mouse if there is one. You can give it to another player, and if you do, lay up to three eggs on this bird. Wow. Or the... Carreru? When activated, the player to your left has a uh, nectar. Uh, it, uh, for solo, you just treat it as, yes, they do uh, gain a nectar from the general supply. Hmm. I do like that as a means of getting more nectar. I'm going to draw from the deck, though, just because I don't know if the nest type is going to be right. We've got the white-breasted wood swallow here, two worms to get out with three points. When played, lay an egg on every bird in your uh, wheaty area, including this one. Grassland can never remember. The Australasian pipit at the end of the game took a card from the deck behind each bird in your grassland, including this one. I like that. Unfortunately, did not get it. The Automa is going to lay an egg, just get that many eggs. Point each at the end of the game for it. Over to me, I have no resources, so I'm going to have to gain some food. It's going to be two dice. Now, I absolutely want a nectar, so this is nectar or cherry. I'm going to take a nectar, and whenever all of the dice are the same in the bird feeder, you can ch and you're gaining food, you can choose to refill it. So I'm going to do that, because I don't... I could use the fish on the musk duck, but hey, why not try and get a nectar? There we go. So I, I could get a wheat so that I can... Oh, I'll gain a wheat anyway, though, won't I, just from this. So I might as well just gain another nectar. There we go. And then choose another player. You both get a wheat, which means I get a wheat. And that is it. Automa's turn. And Automa is going to get an egg and then remove a cube. Brilliant. I'm happy any time things get removed from Automa. Over to me, and what would I like to play now? Would I like to play things that help me get, draw more cards at once? Let's just draw two cards and don't have to pay a nectar. The Wood Swallow, I kind of want to hold on to now. Just because it lays an egg on every bird in the row. So I want to hang on to that. I think the New Holland Honey Eater wouldn't be a bad call. Costs a nectar to play, so that goes out there. And an egg, because it's in the second row. I'm going to choose to take off here, because it's so easy to get them back on there. And that's it for now. But when that gets activated, I'm going to gain more nectar. If there's any in the bird feeder, of course. Autumn's turn, and it's going to gain some food. Mice are a priority, so that's what it's going to take. And it puts a cube back. And this card is going to be removed, as you might guess. It's going to be removed at the end of round one. Okay, back to me. We have two actions left. So what can I do? I could play the Musk Duck. I do want to play as many cards as possible. I have three to Autumn as two at the moment, but he gets to play two more cards as well. I probably don't want to gain eggs yet. Just because I want an egg gone from there, don't I? So I could get the Musk Duck out and then do eggs. 
But I definitely want to do something that spends the nectar because if I don't, it's gone at the end of the round. Yeah, I'm going to play the musk duck and even things out a little bit. Pop it over there so I can spend a food to wipe the display when I choose to draw bird cards. And I will just get two as standard. I'm going to pay nectar instead of any of those three things and pop that in my nectar majority box. And Automa is going to gain food. Mice is a priority. No. Fish. There we go. Fish are gone. And activate all pink powers. I don't have any. I feel confident about winning the goal now. So finally, what would I like to do? I could gain food, but in gaining food, I wouldn't take nectar. Just because it wouldn't last. It would be absolutely pointless. I could get a couple of cards, because that's kind of, that's eternal, isn't it? Maybe I should. Yes, I'm going to draw bird cards. I'm going to draw the Kareru, because I would like to get more nectar. And then, now the Pipit, that is basically, if I fill up the grassland row, that's five extra points. Took a card in every bird in the grasslands. Tucked cards are a point each. That's an eight-point card there just for a couple of resources. Can fit a lot of eggs on it. Or do I just go for... Yeah, we've got to think, be thinking about matching. Because this, this doesn't match. Again. It's the, the kite would match in the future, but that's a, that's a future row there. Maybe I should just draw from the deck and see what we get. I've got a wild, and it can go in forest. That could go up there. At the end of the game, lay an egg on each of your birds with a wingspan less than 30, including this one. So... The whip bird is 30, unfortunately, but I have two already. That would be three that would get free eggs on them at the end. The Splendid Fairy Wren. What a nice name for a fairy wren. So we have the white-faced heron there, Mark Watson. And it's time for another card. I massively encourage you to watch Taskmaster if you haven't already. Uh, so it's going to draw cards. So it's going to wipe the display. And, oh, sorry... Uh, the kite that we wanted and then draw a face down card four points refresh the display we have Blythe's Hornbill the Crested Pigeon and the Golden Headed Sister Cola it also removes a cube from here so I am absolutely winning this and that was the last action wasn't it okie doke the end of the round use round end bird powers if you're playing with the European expansion we are not discard any unused nectar there is none Score end of round goal. So this is why you keep your cubes on here because the goals are concerning how many cubes you've done now. So the Automa's base value is one. It's got no cubes on there. I have three. So I win first place. I take one of my cubes, pop it on first place. Automa goes into second place. We now have one fewer action each for every for the rest of the game. And that's going to continue. We will lose an action at the end of every round. Remove your action cubes. Discard and replace all cards in the bird tray. I just did that. Sorry, guys. You're not going to get a chance to get found. We have the North Island Brown Kiwi, Horsefield's Bronze Cuckoo, and the Southern Cassowary. If round four is over, do game end stuff, but it's not just yet. At the end of the round, we draw Autumn cards and place them up here like this. If there is a cube, we add a nectar to that section. If there is a crossed out cube, we remove a nectar from that section. So this means we're going to add a nectar to round one and remove one from... I'm saying round one and round three. We're going, to remove, we're going to add one to forest and we're going to remove one from wetlands. And then another card which tells us nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so that's, that's worked out okay, hasn't it? Uh, so now we need to remove the card that says remove after round one and then shuffle up all the Automa cards ready for the next round. We need to flip the round tracker. So it's going to be pointing at the round two ability. And also the goal reference, we need to flip to round two. It's going to show us the base values for round two. The goal is actually beak pointing right, and it starts with the base value of two. I have zero birds. I have this single solitary bird here, the Splendid Fairy Wren, that has a right pointing beak. I am not going to do very well at <laughs> that, I don't think. Okay, so I think... I'm going to leave it there for part one. I'm going to go all the way through the game in part two, all the way to the end, and you can see if I beat Autumn's score. If you would like to just know what I think about the new Oceania expansion and the 
Automa game in general. I'm not sure I talked about it in the original Wingspan video, but I will now, whether I did before or not. That's going to be linked in a similar way. Thank you very much for watching, though. I'll see you wherever you end up. Bye!